joins us up next in San Diego. B, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. How can Christina and I help? Um, okay, so I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> it's but, all right. You'll, um, you're going to do fine. We're freaking out, too, if it helps. Thank you. Uh, well, it's kind of bad, but uh, so I called back in, I want to say, like, April 2020 uh, for my debt-free screen, and it was um, with uh, Dave Ramsey and Dr. John Deloney, and I was, like, super excited. Um Especially like heading into a pandemic, I just felt like super relieved that I had gotten out of debt. Um, but then like I saved up the emergency fund. I started investing, like doing everything that um, like following the baby steps. And then I um, kind of like drained my emergency account to start uh, a Roth IRA um, with like a financial pro. And, um, I never really got like my emergency fund built back up before like Murphy started hitting. So That's how it so goes. I, I, know, I know. So I kind of ended up back in, in debt and I was like, well, I'll, I'll make a goal to pay it off in a year. And, um, and that year passed, uh, a couple months ago and I'm still like, looking at this 10 grand that I owe and uh what kind of debt is it I'm it's on my car okay so you didn't have the emergency fund you had car problems you had to get a new car and so you bought a car on a loan yes okay um I I bought it for 14 and over the past year I've only really paid off like about four of it you just been making the minimum payments Um, pretty much yeah, I essentially just like rounded up to like the, like to five hundred. So it's like I've been making extra payments on it. I just haven't been like intentional with it. But how much? Um, how and much? I just feel like a hypocrite. <laughs> I'm like, not it's all right. Hey, you know what? To, Dave's not here. We're gonna treat this like a Planet again. Fitness. This is a judgment free zone today. <laughs> We're not gonna beat you up. The fact that yeah. you called, you showed up, you were vulnerable and honest. It's okay. Yeah. How much debt yeah. did you pay off the first time? Oh my God! Like forty-seven thousand. Wow! How long did that take? It, um, it took me about a year and a half to do that. And that was the same person who stands before us today, saying they can't pay off ten thousand in a year. Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> I honestly, <clears throat> I really hate to like. I've been actually thinking about that for a couple of days now, but. I, when I was paying all that stuff off, I lived, um, on like the East coast and I didn't really like have much to like do where I lived. And now I live in San Diego and I'm doing all these like crazy fun things. What I'm hearing is your lifestyle creeped up. You got a little bit (laughs) lazy and we went, we're in California. Let's have a good time. And here we are. Exactly. Back at yeah, and I'm just like, I don't need to pay off my car. But, like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, why do I have this stupid debt? Like, I hate this. When, um, when you called in back in 2020 and you were talking through your debt-free scream, what was your why in that moment? When they were asking you what motivated you to pay off $47,000 in debt, what was your motivation then? <clears throat> um, Honestly, I had two motivations. I wanted um, – I kind of, like, wanted to – prove to my family that like you didn't need to rely on debt Um, because like my whole family background is like you know we lost our house during the 2008 recession and all that stuff so I've just kind of always had like financial trauma surrounding my family Um, so like that was my biggest push was to like be an idol for like my younger siblings if that makes any sense. Well, yeah. that makes any sense. It absolutely does. Yeah. You, you, that was your never again. You said, my family yeah. tree is going to look a lot different because of the decisions that yeah. I made. I think we need to channel yeah. back to those days and go, I know it. I hate to be here, and I made decisions that weren't great, and I used my emergency fund as an investment tool, and I know I, did, I made some mistakes. Great. Let's pick it up yeah. and move forward and go, what can we do now? So what is your income? <clears throat> Um, it just increased. So I make about eight thousand a month. 
B, that's an amazing so income. All, Why is this debt not I gone, know. you know, two, three months from now? That's a great question. Can you live um, off I, nothing the for the next like, two I months hate, and I clear the debt? I car, too. So in my brain, I'm like, I don't even like my car. <laughs> it was just something I bought real quick in, like, in the thick of How it. How much could you, you know? sell the car and for? So, I don't know, probably twelve or fourteen thousand. And how much do you have in the bank? I want to say around seven thousand. Okay, this is a non-issue. B, if you want to be debt-free today, yeah. go sell the car and get you a five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar car. Yeah. That you like more. And B, who yeah, are you hanging cool. out with in San Diego? It sounds like you've changed communities. You got a different lifestyle. Do you have any other friends who are frugal, who are kind of thinking the same way you are about money, or at least the way you want to think about money? Um, no, honestly, like all my friends are into like the whole credit card point thing and all that stuff. But, um, but are you married every time? Oh, no. Okay. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. She said, <laughs> okay, I'm just figuring out who we can use yeah. to keep you accountable on this journey because it sounds like it's pretty lonely, and you're just out there living La Vida Loca with no one to tell you, hey, maybe we should pay off some debt and make some grown-up decisions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and this is also like my first time sort of like living alone too. So like back when I paid off debt, I, you know, I had like roommates that were like a part of the process and they were just like checking things off with me and stuff so now it's just me and my dog (laughs) that's fun uh, well it sounds like you do great in community i would encourage you to find a local fpu class and actually go to that and get cheerleaders around you get other people around you who are walking through this journey who are motivated who aren't going to be people that you're comparing yourself to and feeling that FOMO. Like you want people around you who will be your cheerleaders and are excited for you paying off debt, not talking about the latest, the latest credit card reward deal. Yeah. (laughs) Have you been through FPU? I have. um, When did you go through it? Actually twice. I think I've been through it. I used to make it like a yearly goal to go to do it again, but then, um, since like the pandemic and all that stuff and all the stuff shut down, I just kind of like lost track of. Uh, okay. Um, well, you know uh, what they say, be <laughs> third time's the charm. And so what we're going to do is gift you uh, Financial Peace University for one year. It's got the latest videos in there, including a new, new lessons with Dr. John Deloney and myself. And I hope that's the motivation you need. I can't sit here and, and make you motivated. You've got to find your own why and use that to drive your budget, your behavior, your lifestyle, and you have an amazing income, and you have money in the bank. Throw six of that at the debt, take it down to four, and this month we're debt-free on your next paycheck. It's that simple. It's just you have to decide, am I going to do this stuff, or am I going to keep living in this shame and guilt and baggage, or do I just want to move forward completely debt-free once and for all? You get to decide. I hope you make the right choice.